We're going to look at adding and subtracting fractions. Um, but before we add and subtract fractions, you have to know how to find your common denominator. So if you remember our rule, once you find your common denominator, you're just going to add or subtract your tops and then keep the common bottom. So you can use this picture to help you remember. So since we're using a common bottom, I kind of think of the rabbit with a cotton bottom, which is like common bottom. It's very similar. Okay, to help me visualize, I need the common bottom. And then the ears are kind of like the top. So I'm doing the top of the first one, and then I'm either adding or subtracting whichever operation was given, plus the top of the other one, and then it's all over the common bottom. Okay. Um, so when we're finding our common denominator, you may not remember exactly what you did like a really long time ago, um, but what happens is the way that you find it is that you represent each factor to the highest power. Okay? So you can use this visual over here to help you. So think of ref Harry Potter, like HP for Harry Potter, like you're refereeing Harry Potter in his Quidditch game, right? So R is for represent, E is for each, F is for factor, and then HP is highest power. So you're representing each factor to the highest power. Okay? So when you're looking at numbers, it went something like this. Now, it may have been a really long time since you've done this, or maybe you just can tell what the common denominator, the least common denominator is, without actually doing any work. You can just see it. That's fine as well. But I'm just going to explain so you remember. So what happens is you break down your number 20. So 5 and 2 and 2. You break down your 24. It's 8 and 3, 4 and 2, 2 and 2. So your 20 is 2 squared times 5. Your 24 is 2 cubed times 3. So remember a factor is uh, something that's being multiplied. So 2 squared is a factor, 5 is a factor, 2 cubed is a factor, and 3 is a factor. So what you're doing is you're representing each factor, right? You're refing, represent each factor to the highest power. Right? So when we represent each factor, I need to represent the 2. So between 2 squared and 2 cubed, we're doing the highest power, which in this case is a 2 cubed. So I take the 2 cubed, and that becomes part of my least common denominator. I have to represent this factor of the 5, because we represent each factor to the highest power. So the highest power here is an unsaid 1, so I represent the 5. I also have to represent the 3. So then my least common denominator becomes 2 cubed times 3 times 5. Well, 2 cubed is 8. 3 times 5 is the 15. So then we do 8 times 15, which gives us 120. So that's how we find it with our numbers. Now, again, you may not remember that specific process, or maybe you have a different way of looking at it. That's fine. When we're doing common denominators with factors, with rationals, um, you have the <laughs> my dog is killing me sorry um so you <laughs> have to represent each factor still to the highest power i think it's actually faster to find with than it is with numbers okay so notice these denominators are all factored so what we want to do is we want to represent each factor so factor 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 so notice we've got an x minus two and an x minus two here both of these have a first power. Well, we want the highest power. Well, the highest power is 1. Both of them happen to be 1. So I have to represent the x minus 2 to the first power. Remember, we're representing each factor to the highest power. Ref Harry Potter. So you've got, I have to represent the x plus 3. Is there any other x plus 3? Well, this is an x plus 3. So if I compare the powers, we've got a first and a second power because we're representing each factor to the highest power. So between 1 and 2, 2 is the highest power, so I need to take x plus 3 to the second power. Okay. Have we represented x minus 1? No. Is there any other x minus 1? No. So I have to represent it as x minus 1. And then this thing is our least common denominator. Again, we are not multiplying it out. I'm just leaving it like that. Okay. If we look at our next one, Again, we're still ref HP, ref in Harry Potter. We're representing each factor to the highest power. So you can look at 3 and an x squared as their own powers. There's no other just a number out in front, so I have to represent the 3. I have no other 
uh, monomial x out in front, so I have to represent that to the highest power. The power is an x squared. Then I'm going to look at x minus 4. I have no other x minus 4, so I have to represent the x minus 4. Then I'm going to look at my next one, an x minus 8. I have no other x minus 8, but I have to represent that factor still. You're representing each factor, right? Represent each factor to the highest power. This had an unsaid power of 1, so it also has an unsaid power of 1. So now we're going to go to our next one. So I look at 3x plus 1. Is there any other 3x plus 1? Yeah, this one is 3x plus 1. So I'm representing it to the highest power, which is 3. Oops, plus 1 cubed. So between the 1, the unsaid 1 and the 3, the highest power is 3. It's the highest power because we've ref Harry Potter. So we're representing each factor to the highest power. Then I need to represent the x minus 1, because I haven't represented that, and that's a factor. So I represent the x minus 1, and then this whole thing is my least common denominator. Again, we are not going to multiply that out. I just leave it as is. Okay. If we look at our next one, I have to, again, we're representing each factor. We're roughing Harry Potter, so I represent each factor to the highest power. So x minus 3 is a factor. That matches this factor. Both of them have unsaid powers of 1. So for my least common denominator, I have to represent the x minus 3, and I'm representing it to the highest power, which in this case, both of them are unsaid 1s. I'm going to look at my next one. I have an x minus 5. I need to represent the x minus 5. There's no other x minus 5. I'm representing it to its highest power, which is to the first power, because that's what this one is. Then I need to represent the x minus 2. It hasn't been represented yet. Um, there's no other x minus 2. I represent to the highest power, so I do x minus 2 to the first, since this one was to the first. Again, you don't need to write the 1s, and I don't need to multiply it out. That's our least common denominator. So we look at the next one. I have um, a 7x cubed minus 1. There's not any further factoring that this one can do. So I have to represent that factor. Now, remember, we're looking at factors. So if your equation is not, or if your expression is not factored, you have to factor your denominators first. Okay, so keep that in mind. Here, we have an x plus 1. Um, there's an x plus 1 over here as well. Both of them are to the first power. So we get x plus 1 represented to the first power because that was the highest power. I have to represent the 2. I'm going to put it out in front because it's a monomial. I'm going to leave a little space because I know I'm going to do the x in just a second. And then we also have to represent the x. Oh, that one should be gray. So 2 times x, the x was the first power. There's no other monomial x out in front. So then this becomes my least common denominator. So that's your process for finding your least common denominator.